<laughs> so, yeah, what is a sensei? Well, this is basically, is it, does, it, does it not translate to the one who's gone before? Is that not it? Well, that is, that is the trans. I mean, you know, all the kids are told it's teacher, aren't they? But it generally is. I think the actual translation is as you said, um, which I suppose. Well, it's a much more of a Japanese cultural thing, isn't it, rather than anything else. The translation we assume is what we're told it is, but I've never actually gone out and researched that myself. Mm -hmm. And how it's used in, I mean, in Japan, that's used for everything from Go players to yeah. school teachers to everything. It's so just interesting. Sorry. Sorry, I was going to say, so the one who has gone before, is that why people just assume they know everything? Because they've been before. <laughs> you know, like, like we, we did, I mean, we're going to go off topic almost immediately, but, you know, <laughs> the, 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 <laughs> the life coach, you know, he's not a life coach. It's not. It's not necessarily been. It walked in my shoes in 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 that respect. You know, um, if I've had certain issues in my life, he doesn't necessarily know those things. So, no, it, it's it's specific to to field, but it's like the conversations. I don't, again, as he's got older, I've had less and less of them with Philip. But when Philip was coming through, a perfectly rational thinking human being, capable of making his own choices. But as he said, he used to consult with me purely because I've got more life experience than him. So the chances are that there are situations that he's coming up against that I've seen before. So he'd still make his own choice, but he would ask me what I thought about things. And that's pretty much, I think, where a sense he starts. I mean, when the one who goes before is just somebody who's potentially seen these things before and experienced these things before, so has, has resolved problems and issues. So a karate sense is just in that field like you're saying so yeah. it's nothing else other than karate so it's been there before in karate yeah they're not a teacher there's nothing in yeah. implied in the term that says they're a teacher it's just somebody who's got more experience than you or was further down the line or is well, just older together, than I mean, you. society used to really look up to its older people mm. and they would be like the the people where everyone would go to for answers whereas that seems whereas now older people seem to be more shunned mm. in this in our society and I believe that they're still respected more in Japanese society, or were, I don't know. And so yeah. older people looked up to as people who know more stuff. And I assume in most cases, the karate sensei would be older than most of the students, at least originally. Mm -hmm. Whereas that's not necessarily the case now in your average karate class. And if you've had someone come up from the kids' class, mm. and then suddenly they're 18, they're in the adult class, Maybe when they're early twenties, they're teaching people who are way older than them. Yeah, I think actually, I'd, I'd say I started teaching in my mid twenties. Um, I think when I started running a club, probably late twenties when I start when I opened the club. So yeah, I, I possibly wouldn't have gone before many in that respect. Or well, my time serve would have been, I suppose. You know, I'd, I'd, I'd been I've been doing karate since I was nine years old. So yeah, well, and that's that's so. why it's only relevant to the teaching of karate. Mm. Yeah, but that's where people put it on hold sometimes. And you see a lot of these posters that say, karate doesn't just teach you fighting, it teaches you life skills. Your sensei is a coach, he's a mentor, he's a, a I don't know, there's a list of about 30 things that they say they are. And you're like, yeah, well, and if they I think they no. are, then they're just a dickhead, <laughs> to be quite frank. Anybody who considers themselves to be those things, yeah, well, well <laughs> I'm not even going to start ranting yet. One no, of the issues should. is, <laughs> you could. One of the issues is that someone can get a lot of authority and people who don't question them, mm -hmm. frankly, and they're a complete bell end who's done three years of karate and they've got a black belt and they can suddenly teach. Yeah. I mean, I was relatively young when I started teaching and I didn't know me ass from me elbow. So. Yeah, which is fine I mean, if all you're teaching is physical movements and you understand those physical movements. It's when you take on the mantle of being Yoda. You um, don't even have to understand the physical movements. Too no, well. you just have to be able to replicate okay. them. Because the people you're teaching only have to make the shapes. Mm. And they don't even have to be that good. Again. No. In, some, in some cases, again, we're looking at the lowest common denominator, obviously, here. Mm. Uh, but, yeah. So I think the worry is that suddenly... And I think it's maybe part of the culture is that a sensei is this cool thing. I mean, I, you see like Mr. Miyagi 
And it's like, oh yeah, he's so cool. He's got all this life experience. He knows everything. And everyone wants to be like him. Uh, get someone to wash your car and paint your fence. Great. That's what I'm after. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that's yeah. not your typical guy in the street. I mean, you can get some guy. I mean, at school, I was totally shit at sport and I hated doing it and I hardly ever mm -hmm. did any. But suddenly you're a sensei and you're head of this physical class of yeah, I, I suppose you just sort of painted the picture there, really. So I, I guess it's like um, the movies and that have painted this romantic idea of what a sensei is. They? Like you say, they've, they've painted this picture like you've got Mr. Miyagi, he's got all this life experience and he passes on his wisdom to Daniel son. Um, yeah. and, and it's not just that film, you know, there's been other, other, other films before. You have, but I don't think we can point the finger at the entertainment uh, media for that because well no because the the karate world itself has gone out of its way to paint this picture of what a sensei is and how they're this humble person who knows everything about everything and that's me you know well it's it's all of us isn't it and and this is the horseshit side of it is it is all these people who are the head of this massive thing they're worshipped they're put on a pedestal and so, oh, yeah, but they're so humble because they've got people to tell you that you should do everything they say and listen to what they know. And it just drives me up the wall. <laughs> I'm going to struggle very hard to have a coherent conversation through this because I just get so cross so quickly. Well, I think so. OK, so we've touched quite heavily on the negative parts of the fact that um, mm. some people are complete dicks and think they suddenly are qualified to teach anything. Yeah. It's generally, I think being a sensei is a bit like being on Facebook. Suddenly you're qualified to have a mm. valid opinion about everything and, and people should listen to you. Yeah, as soon as, yeah, as, soon as you've got a platform to speak from. I, yeah. I, I understand the irony of us sitting here <laughs> on social media. <laughs> Classic. Giving our opinions to people on what they should think about stuff. But, okay, so we can move. So, <laughs> in that case, let's... Let's, let's skip around the agenda and go to can you disagree with your sensei so we're sitting here saying we're giving our opinions to people but frankly mm -hmm. we're more than happy for people to write into this video and go well i don't agree with you because of this um, I, yeah i so I, I think um can you disagree or can you question is that sort of going along the same lines or yeah um, yeah yeah can you question your sensei i think that's fine. I, that, that was going from my head a little while ago um can you question? I think probably one of the issues with that years ago was a lot of the senior instructors were Japanese and probably didn't even understand your question or it couldn't translate that well with their answers. So that's probably why I'm guessing, you know, why you perhaps couldn't question um, the that's, senior. Yeah, this is part of it. Also, their culture is different to ours. Yeah. We're much more yeah. questioning culture. They're a bit more, it was they're told. Um, but I think a lot of the things like Kim A, straight back legs, they were down to bad translations. Yeah, I think so, yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, that, I mean, that's a real issue. If you can't, if you haven't got the same language, it's quite hard to actually explain stuff. So you end up Plus, copying, yeah. trying to make the same shapes as the bloke at the front. And that's translated down through years and years of stuff. Whereas now we can, well, people sort of speak the same language as me. Um, but people can actually ask you questions and how does that work why is that doing that and people should yeah oh absolutely yeah but there's a difference between being able to question which is always a good thing i think and then disagreeing with the answer on principle so well i don't think that and people i think are still quite entitled to do that but you can have the conversation about well i do this and i do this because now yeah, if, they, if they're prepared to accept that explanation because you've talked them around that's fine but they're still at liberty to disagree with that explanation if they don't find that that works for them it's just then and it starts to sound quite uh well if you disagree on a fundamental level with my concepts of what i do then you're probably training in the wrong place mm. uh, but it's very quickly then gets to the well you do what i say or you don't train here well i think yeah so we have this sometime. There's the classic thing that they attribute to Bruce Lee, but I'm sure it wasn't Bruce Lee who said it originally. Absorb what is useful and discard what is not. Mm -hmm. And people use that for a myriad of bullshit things. So, um, 
we had some guys come up to the club many, many years ago and they were doing something again. Oh, well, I don't find this useful, so I won't do it. But they tried it like two or three times. And you go, you can't see if something works or not. Well, certain things you can, but a lot of things you can't see if they work or not by trying them two or three times. Mm -hmm. You can't expect to be an expert in something in 10 minutes. Terry O'Neill went the other side of the coin. And I think uh, it might be in Working With Warriors by Dennis Martin. And he's talking about it. And he says, Terry O'Neill would practice a technique countless times until he got it right. And he would say any technique is workable if it's practiced hard enough. Mm -hmm. and, and that could well be, oh, it certainly was true for him, I think, but that could be true for anyone. But it's where in that, where do you get that middle ground? So if they yeah. come to the club and go, I don't agree with you there, that's fine. But they've got to have, you've got to be able to have a rational discourse as to why you think it works and why they don't. Not just a, it works, fuck off, or it doesn't work, I can't be asked to learn it. Yeah, yeah, but it's, it's, it's about flow of a class, though, isn't it, as well? So, you, you know, you have to be able to have those discussions, but it's appropriate timing. Oh, yeah. So there are a lot of things that, that come into that. Yeah, I think that works well at our club, where we have the general class, you know, for, for, for an hour and a half, and then we have the extra half hour, it was an hour, mm -hmm. um, where we have the seniors, and it is pretty much an open mat, an open discussion, you know, so we, we'll do things and we'll mix ideas with each other and, 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 and question you know what what is working and what isn't and what works for me necessarily doesn't work for someone else so we try and find out why and then perhaps it might just be a minor adjustment because as long as the principles are sound it's just a minor adjustment to make something work so cool. but yeah as part of that then of course it comes down to what level is the questioner at you know if they've been with you for six weeks and they start to say no i don't think this is right and i don't think that's right based on what Whereas, as you say, Brian, if you've got your, your seniors who've been with you for a year, two years, whatever, they're hanging on, uh, they have a base to ask questions from. True, yeah, yeah. You know. It's also what they're asking questions about. If we're just talking about bits of technique or how a bit of bunkai works or something, hmm. that's sort of fine and probably, I mean, like <clears throat> my class as well, we'll just work through stuff and see if it works, doesn't, why it does, why it doesn't. Yeah. Alfie's shorter generally and we'll go, oh, this works better for me. Uh, and he's got an Aikido background, so he'll do some stuff differently. But if, I don't know, if they're disagreeing about other things, so I don't know, really. Um, well, a bit like we were talking about women's self-defense recently. And if a woman's saying, well, that doesn't make sense, I don't like that idea because she may have a totally different life experience to, hmm. to you, or will have, because she's a woman. Don't know yeah. about, well, maybe not. Um, but, uh, <laughs> and so therefore they may actually bring something to the class that's really useful hmm. i mean it's like if i was te I, I, if, I don't know so if i'm teaching breakfalls i generally don't i don't bother teaching breakfalls because i go alfie can you teach breakfalls yeah. you do aikido you're better at these than i am hmm. and you see i've had visitors who look at me like why are you not teaching it you're the sensei and you're like well you could and at that time you've got like a uh, a brown belt teaching the class and yeah. you're joining in and people look at you like you're some sort of fucking weirdo but this is this is this is again back to the original definition of the, of the one who's gone before the person with the most experience is best so qualified to, yeah. to, to yeah. show you that stuff rather than sensei is an all-encompassing title and the man who knows everything about everything in his top of the tree so he but should be best at everything you do no yeah, it's, not, be, it's not even dropping the ego is it you know it, 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 <laughs> you, know, you know somebody's better at that than you and you're just letting them doing it i suppose it is true yeah, yeah <laughs> i mean there, there'll is. be those senses that are egotistical and then they'll say no <laughs> I'll, I'll do the break falls even though he's fucking better yeah because they've got to, they've got to look yeah. like the instructor in front of the class i mean we got dave who's qualified as a lawyer so if we talk about anything legal it's like you know dave we got this right can you make sure james has done all that research into um psychology of violence and and so you've got all these resources you can use Mm. Or you could stand at the front and say you know best about everything. Yeah. And, and, and people see stuff differently. I mean, yesterday we had a club conversation and Carolyn came up with some really good points. I mean, you know, Carolyn in our club has got, what, she's a six, six or seven Q. Came up with some stuff no one else had thought of. Mm. Why would you discount that? Well, that's, again, from my philosophy, the way I do it is... Uh, I'm fairly keen on questions because 
that's where things come from that I haven't thought of before. You know, it's yeah. very easy. What the the downside of being that person who's gone before is that you've sort of narrowed things down. Okay, this is the way I think. This is what I do, and this is my world that I move in. And somebody throws something at you from completely from the side that never would have occurred to you. Mm. But if you're not open to questioning, then this is the way the world works. Mm. Yeah. So I suppose the physical side of karate as a sensei, you, you would have probably gone before. Yeah. You know, done all the physical techniques, understood how the, how the mechanics of everything works, but then mm. life experiences, you not necessarily have gone before them. Right. You know, so like you said, um, the, the, the lady at your club, she, she'd come up with some stuff that you'd never thought of before because you've not been there before, whereas she yeah. has. So she became the sensei as such. Exactly. For, yeah, yeah. yeah. And yeah, we're looking at it like that. She's 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 gone before, <coughs> and you'll probably never go there. <laughs> Maybe depends well, what her life experience was, I suppose. <laughs> Friday night, it's, um, <laughs> <I'm open> to, <laughs> no. <laughs> so the question then comes up: Is how long do you need a sensei for? Oh. I suppose as we just sort of messed around with the definition of sensei a little bit there, how long do you need a sensei for? Is a question. So let's take an example of, I don't know, uh, there's one bloke in your club. Let's, should we, I don't know, should we name names or not? Fuck it. No, I don't know. Do you want to name names? Well, you can do. I don't see why not. First okay, names. So, so let's take, um, well, let's take, I think Luke would be a good example. Yeah. Uh, so Luke in your club, terrible hair. Um, <laughs> At least he's got hair. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's just, just got it anyway. He does have a choice as to what he does with it. That's the thing. Yeah, it annoys me. Uh, <laughs> so he comes to your club. Uh, doesn't need to, he, really. Yeah, does he need to or doesn't? Does he yeah. need a sensor? Well, he doesn't need my instruction. I think uh, what he... <laughs> He probably will argue that he does <laughs> um, hmm. for some things, but uh, you know, you, if you're if you're studying the physical side of karate, you still need a body to play with, don't you? So it will still. <clears throat> so regardless of whether he needs me as an instructor, he'll still need to to train with other people. Um, and I suppose coming to my club, he's training with like-minded people. Whereas if he was going elsewhere, um, he wouldn't be getting what he wanted. So. So the. I suppose, so you're, so he's got to a stage of development. We're saying that he can think for himself yeah. um, and doesn't actually physically need someone to push him in the right direction with all the caveats we've just said of taking other people's life experience mm. when you're with them. So, but when does that happen? I mean, none of us have got a regular sensei because um, we all teach classes, I suppose. Mm -hmm. So when do you, so when I first started a class, um, as I said before, I didn't know my ass from the elbow. I was relatively young. I probably didn't even understand the physical techniques properly because my original sensei wasn't that forthcoming on explanation of anything. Um, but he sent me out to go and do a class. He wanted me to come and train with him still. But there was a lot of other people who were as bad or worse than me at the time who didn't go to the class on a regular basis. When do you get that transition? That's the question. Hmm. Is it different for everyone? Yes, yeah, so it's, it's funny because because I, I kind of I wouldn't say anybody in my club. I, I, I wouldn't call him my sensei, but we kind of brainstorm in the club, hmm. which I'm still learning. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So I, I am still learning, but it's through it's through like-minded club members and, and like I say we brainstorm so it's it's um it's a fucking shit word isn't it <laughs> it's like yeah. we're on the apprentice and we're brainstorming <laughs> but it's it's like the stuff we do even or, or any of the people i chat with yeah i'm master of my own little kingdom and it's a very tiny kingdom but i still need exposure to other ideas because otherwise so you, you can even just... this even this chat do you know what i mean you go yeah. away and you think oh actually yeah there, there was um shit in there i never thought about and you go away and think about it and yeah. i suppose um so being totally self-sufficient i think is dangerous thing because you can 
a, a phrase I use fairly often, it's believing your own myth. Now, you, you, you can paint a picture so that people will come to you and you can teach them stuff. And you have to have a level of authority, an air of authority. Otherwise, what's the point? You know, you've got to at least give the impression that you know something about something. But you have to be honest with people about what it is you know about. But if you're entirely self-sufficient and self-contained, you can start to believe that yourself when the only people you talk to are people who just nod and bow and say, oh, sensei. You know, so I think it's very important to continually be exposed to other people outside. So you've got to want to continue learning <coughs> and continue developing is probably the key. Yeah. Um, looking for new ideas or thinking about new ideas and trying them out. But physically, you can probably, I wouldn't say master cry, but physically you could get good enough to not need a sensei <coughs> in a much shorter period of time. Well, yeah, I mean, what I'd say, we're, we're going back to the, 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 the classes that I run. So I've got an hour and a half, which is general class open to all grades. Um, and in that class there, I would say I lead as the sensei. So I'm, I'm, I'm teaching the class and correcting people's body structure, and, you know, the, how, how they're doing their techniques. But, yeah, the last half hour is, um, is everybody's the sensei. You know, everybody's sort of um, leading each other, you know. So like, like we said a little while ago, so it's a brainstorm, you know, we, we brainstorm. Yeah. So we're all learning off of each other. And I think that's probably the best way to do it, isn't it? I think, yeah, I that, think another point worth making there, though, um, as a general part of the conversation, is that a lot of or a number of the people in that senior session are very often not people who come up through you and with you. So mm. their thought process isn't entirely governed by you. They're people who've come in from outside, are people yeah. at similar levels to us who come in from outside. So uh, the ones, they have different experiences. Yeah. And, and the, the other the ones that are through that, through my club, through my system, they are taught to think for themselves as well. I say taught to, they're encouraged to think for themselves. Um, so but by the time they get to the stage where they can come to that, that, that last half hour, mm -hmm. you know, they're already thinking for themselves and, you know, Sort of value their opinions and, and we, we i've got to be honest i think that's one of the key things that people a lot don't do in karate is encourage their students to think for themselves mm -hmm. which is my sort of and obviously you've got to be careful because if you start doing it at really really early yeah grades yeah. can be well not not for adult generally if you actually have a atmosphere of people learning and questioning and thinking for themselves it just seems to benefit the class as far as I can see, hmm. but I don't think that's always done or often done in karate. I, don't, I, don't know. I think always, yeah, it's quite optimistic. Often, no. Yeah. So um, that's we're... certainly something I really like doing because then people can actually start thinking for themselves. And surely that's what you want as karate people. You don't want followers. You want people who can think for themselves because when they get to that, if it actually is needed in a violent confrontation or, or potential violent confrontation, you need someone who's got their own authority, can think for themselves and doesn't need to refer to someone else to, to have an answer. Yeah, well, but we've, we've much... Just, sorry, Grant, carry on. Yeah, I was going to say, jump, jumping in on <clears throat> how long do you need a sensor, I suppose it, it depends on what, what you're doing in karate as well. Hmm. So if you was uh, competing you would i'd say you need a sense so you need a coach you need you need somebody you can see somebody in your corner if you're if you're doing kumite for example that what your opponent's doing what you need to tactically do to beat that person so you would need a coach you know what in your competitive you know in your competitive years i suppose mm. um and, and professionals do that don't they you know professional tennis players professional boxers you know they've all got their coaches when they retire from the sport um, they no longer lead their coach because then you know it's, it's not a requirement anymore. Um, mm. So so yes, I, I, I'm guessing it's just in whatever capacity you're doing karate in as well. Well, yeah, that sort of leads us on to probably where I was going to go next. Anyway, is that we're painting this picture very much from the concepts of what we teach and how we teach it, and the sort of people who come to us and what they're looking to learn in the background that we came from, an awful lot of people aren't going for that. They're going for a hierarchical, structured, rigid, cultural experience. So, you know, they're looking entirely for that mock Japanese culture 
for the structure that goes with it, for the person at the top of the tree and everybody knowing their place and, and not thinking for themselves. I know we've discussed this before. So are they definition of a sensory... Or, or they actually go in and they're expecting that's what it's going to be. And they're expecting the sensei at the front will literally be Mr. Miyagi. I think really, the thing so is they... that the, the people who go to that and the people who stay with that I don't think if they're free thinkers that they're forced into that way of thinking. They never quite fit in. But an awful lot of people are just looking for something in their lives. And it happens to be karate that they've stumbled into where there's surety, where they're reassured they can go in. They've got a physical activity, but they don't have to take responsibility for anything. They don't have to think about anything. They don't have to do about anything. It's a, and I use the term loosely, but a lot of karate clubs think of themselves that way as a family there's the head of the family and they're all part okay. of that family and they've got that but the reality is that it's it's sort of a family from as far as western culture is concerned a sort of family from the 1850s where everybody knows their place and father is head of the the thing and nobody questions and nobody argues well, I think the other thing is, you were just saying, you know, so if you go there and the people are actually looking for something else and then they'll go, oh, I mean, a bit like I did. I went to, well, my first cry club shut down that I went to. Then the second one I went to, I was in it and I'm thinking, well, this isn't for me. You start asking questions. People are frowning at you. Mm -hmm. You're thinking this isn't quite what I thought it was going to be. I want this, this and this. Then you've got two choices. You either shut up and put up mm. or you piss off and do something else. I pissed off and did something else. Um, and then I realized how little I did know when I left that one. I went and joined someone else and learned a load more from them. And, and then again, it wasn't quite what I wanted. So I had discussions there and it was obvious that I was probably better off leaving again. And that's sort of how my evolution went. Because it was sort of like, well, this isn't quite what I expected. And I could have just stayed and probably have been... Well, looking at people who are below me now, I think I'd have been a seventh or eighth down by now. So, you know, mm -hmm. I've fucking lost out somewhere, haven't I? Yeah, I think, <laughs> I think that's where my karate evolved a lot is when I started asking questions, though. You know, yeah. but then I think um didn't necessarily ask my sensei, my chief instructor. I didn't ask him the question. I started asking myself for questions um, and then trying to find the answers through reading, through attending seminars and, you know, talking with other people. Uh, didn't get the answers from my because again I, I suppose it's like you don't ask the questions <laughs> it was that kind of association you know that, um, yeah but the thing is that the people in that association and this is where we're slightly off piste as far as the mainstream is concerned the people in those sort of associations have grown up with that so when they get to the stage where the top of their particular branch of the tree that's the culture they've grown up in they never thought about anything. They're now top of that tree. So as far as they're concerned, that is just the way the world works. Hmm. Yeah. But I find it weird because we have people come to some of the seminars that I ran with different people. They go, oh, my God, this stuff's great. I could want to do this all the time. And I said, hmm. well, do it then. And they're like, yeah, yeah, oh. but I don't know if my instructor will let me. And I'm like, we're well, not allowed. Yeah, yeah. And I said, well, time. we'd love to do that, leave. but we're not allowed. Yeah. And I said, leave and do it on your own. And he's like, oh. But who would do my gradients? I said, well, you can do them. Or if you really want, I'll turn up and sit there with you. And he's like, oh. And it's like, oh, no, no. Oh, I don't know. They're running their own club. The only thing they're not doing is gradings. And literally, that was when you had about 400 people in a hall. Mm -hmm. You have one instructor looking at 30 people at a time doing a grading. So he wasn't looking. No. And you're like, why do you think that's better than the alternative? And I... I don't know. I, I could never understand why he didn't just up and leave. Mm. There's lots of people like that I still know now. Mm. Yeah. Well, you see them at our seminars all the time. You know, I know that not everybody has the opportunity just around the corner to go and train with people who do what we do. But the number of people who come in uh, and go through and then say, oh, yeah, that's really great. I'd love to do this, but we're not allowed to do that. Or there isn't. Well, why why isn't there why can't you what what, what makes thing? it difficult i didn't have people to train with doing the stuff i wanted to do no. so i had to start my own club yeah and that's what i did yeah yeah train people that's up exactly and now i get them yeah yeah i couldn't um I, I i wouldn't still be doing karate now if i didn't 
break away and do what, what you do, you know. Yeah. So, no. um, yeah. But people have been sold on and accepted this idea that it's official. If you if you stay with such and such an organisation, your grades are real and everybody knows they're real and they're accepted around. And, I and think it, that's another good uh, discussion topic. Yeah, that was like grades. Yeah. 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 But, uh, write that down, Andy. But it's this notion out. that if you leave, then, you know, well, nothing you do is real all of a sudden because you haven't got the approval of yeah, some, and a lot some of people group or association. Think that's the seal. That is the seal of approval, isn't it? You've got to have a, hmm. a grade by some Japanese instructor from a faraway land yeah. and if you haven't got that your cart is bullshit <laughs> so mm. um yeah so I, yeah i think that'll be another good discussion topic i think that one yeah i think you're right yeah um so i mean the other thing we sort of touched on and then veered off again so when you get to the top of that tree and you are the sensei and all you've got is yes people you mm -hmm. start believing your own bullshit yes mm. i think we've all got well i mean <laughs> well know, i've got I've got Steve and James who keep my feet firmly on the floor, and obviously there's us three who keep each other's feet firmly yeah. on the floor. None, none of my guys are going to listen to what I say. If I if I start horseshitting them, I start to get the look. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I know full well that I'm thinking, yeah, I'm in bullshit mode now, aren't I? I know it. They know it. Okay, let, let's have a laugh and move on. Yeah.